This is Mystery MTG Damien, and let me help you become more informed about competitive magic. Let's jump into it. While the Pioneer Regional Championship season trundles onward, this weekend was a bit slower than the previous two, with just one big tournament happening in Canada. That's because the majority of Magic players were focused on pre-release and Arena Early Access events for the largest crossover Magic set to date, The Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth. While this set has massive appeal for casual and commander players with dozens of legendary creatures and a sweet new mechanic to exploit, it will also have a sizable impact on competitive constructed magic, since the cards are also legal in modern. Today we'll take a short detour from our usual competitive metagame breakdown and deck techs in order to focus on a few of the most impactful, powerful cards in the new Lord of the Rings set, and how they may change the face of modern going forward. The One Ring As the ring is the focal point of the entire story in the Lord of the Rings, it makes sense that its namesake card would be designed to be uniquely powerful. And indeed, this card is terrifyingly potent. First off, the One Ring being colorless means any deck can play it without altering its mana base, which is a huge point in its favor. That said, costing 4 mana is a bit on the expensive side in the modern format, meaning it needs to make a rather large impact when it resolves, since tapping out on turn 4 or 5 can often mean you may not get another turn against decks that can consistently win the game as early as turn 3. Fortunately, tapping out for the One Ring doesn't mean you're exposed to losing in a lot of matches, since it literally gives you protection from everything until your next turn when it enters the battlefield, making it quite difficult for an opponent to kill you since they can't interact with you at all. Next, the One Ring immediately replaces itself as it can tap the turn it comes into play to draw you a card. Now, it being indestructible already means it's going to be difficult for many decks to get this off the table, but even if an opponent has an exile effect, such as Haywire Might, the player with the one ring will still be up a card. Finally, if the ring sits in play for even one turn cycle, the person playing it will be able to draw three total cards off of it. One the turn it comes into play, then two more after upkeep on the next turn, while only paying one life in the process. From there it just keeps getting more and more ridiculous. On the third turn that the One Ring is in play, its pilot will have paid three life total and drawn a staggering six cards from it, which is an incredible amount of card advantage for very little cost, and it only continues to snowball from there. Despite it being a legendary artifact, this is the kind of powerful card advantage engine that players hope to draw in almost every game meaning three or even four copies of the One Ring will almost certainly be played in the modern decks that want it, of which there are many. With plenty of ways to mitigate the damage it's doing to its pilot, like gaining life with Omnath Locus of Creation, or by bouncing it with Teferi Time Raveler if the burden counters get too high, the drawback on the card is very manageable, while the boon it gives you is tremendous. Be ready to see the One Ring at the top tables of every modern tournament going forward. Samwise Gamgee One of the main characters in the Lord of the Rings story, Samwise Gamgee will also be a main character in the value-based food combo decks that abound in modern. At just 2 mana, Sam is easy to cast, and in the food decks can often immediately activate his ability to bring back legendary creatures like Asmora, Nomardica, ta artifact engine pieces like Witch's Oven, or the Underworld Cookbook, or even just additional copies of himself, all while his static ability pumps out additional food tokens. This makes Sam great at not only producing the resources which enable the food deck's various combos, but also as an engine slash combo piece himself to utilize those resources in order to win the game. Samwise Gamgee combined with a recurring sacrifice effect like Viscera Seer plus sacrifice fodder like Cauldron Familiar means you can make your opponents lose infinite life by casting the familiar with Sam in play, which triggers Sam to make a food token, then sacrificing the familiar to the seer and finally bringing the familiar back by sacrificing the food token that Sam made, which of course triggers Sam again, 
which makes another food token, and now we have an infinite loop, which wins the game on the spot. A very powerful enabler and engine piece in one makes Samwise Gamgee an auto-include in one of the most powerful decks in Modern, and a card we will definitely be seeing at the top Modern tournament tables. Reprieve Reprieve, aka the White Remand, may seem like a simple, low-impact spell when compared to some of the other top cards from the set, but as we've seen in the past, it's often the cheap, straightforward, interactive cards like this that have the biggest impact on a format, such as Fatal Push, Thoughtseize, etc. In addition, Reprieve doesn't share many of the weaknesses of its blue counterpart, Remand. It ignores popular modern sideboard cards like Mystical Dispute and Veil of Summer, and because of the way it's worded, Reprieve can also counter spells that would normally be uncounterable, due to effects from cards like Cavern of Souls or Boseju who shelters all. There are many modern decks that would like to run a tempo-based counter spell, but which aren't interested or able to splash blue, making Reprieve a very attractive option. While I don't expect Reprieve to be a format staple, I wouldn't be surprised to see it make an appearance in the sideboards or even main decks of many popular archetypes in Modern. Rosy Cotton of South Lane Another attractively costed engine piece, Rosy Cotton of South Lane has the ability to do some pretty powerful things in Modern, as there are many excellent cards which make tokens. The most obvious of these, and perhaps the most powerful way to exploit Rosie's ability to put plus one plus one counters on creatures, is by combining her with Scurry Oak. With the Oak in play, Resolving Rosie produces a food token from her Enter the Battlefield trigger, which triggers her second ability, putting a plus one plus one counter on the Oak, which in turn triggers the Oak, making a Squirrel token, which then triggers Rosie's second ability again, giving the Oak another counter which makes another squirrel token, which triggers Rosie again, and now we've created an infinite loop, which generates infinite squirrel tokens and gives Scurry Oak infinite plus one plus one counters. With a card like Soul Warden in play, it's also infinite life, which plays well with Heliod, Suncrowned, another combo card that previously saw play alongside Scurry Oak. The low casting costs of Rosie Cotton and Scurry Oak mean you can put both into play at instant speed with cards like Collected Company to combo off out of nowhere. While this specific flavor of combo deck hasn't seen much play recently, Rosie Cotton of South Lane may be exactly what the deck needs to once again be a real competitor in the powerful modern landscape. Flame of Anor a flexible, powerful, attractively costed spell should always be taken seriously when talking about playability in Modern, and Flame of Anor is just that. The key to unlocking the potential of this card will hinge upon a deck's ability to cast it while having a wizard in play, since drawing two cards while also destroying an artifact or creature on the other side of the battlefield is a massive swing in terms of tempo and card advantage. Fortunately, there is no shortage of powerful wizards in blue and red, but the one best suited to pair with Flame of Anor is clearly Snapcaster Mage. While Snapcaster hasn't seen much play in Modern recently, Flame of Anor may be the spell that makes it relevant again, as it's an incredibly powerful end-step play to suddenly be able to flash back a Flame of Anor from the graveyard and also cast two of its modes since Snapcaster Mage is a wizard. If a blue-red control deck is viable in Modern, as it has been in the past, Snapcaster Mage and Flame of Anor will certainly be its backbone. How that will line up against the wider metagame has yet to be seen, but the power of casting a Flame of Anor and choosing two modes is undeniably potent, and may just be strong enough to bring Snapcaster Mage out of retirement.